Hey everybody, world record viewing of Racing Gears Advance, we're here. Uh, week two. They ruined this game too. They did. It's, it's garbage now. <laughs> no, they ruined no. it's, it's smoke, it's tearing apart. They're doing really good work with this. Yeah, every single time. We were talking about it a little bit before we, uh, while we were setting up and, and I kind of expected this might be the month finally where we get just a plain by the numbers speed run of the game. Uh, that's not to like. I I, I love glitch speedruns. It's just very surprising that there doesn't seem to be any games we can present anymore that can't be broken in half. Uh, yeah, this is a. It's, it's hard to figure out what kind of things going to happen with a racing game. I didn't really expect out of bounds glitches to be as powerful as they are. Uh, just driving around like a like it's Mega Man and just clipping through the wall all the time and just driving on the air. That's what we got a lot of. That's the main thing, and it shows up a lot. A lot of out of bounds yep. driving in this run. Eric's currently under 30 minutes with the world record here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a few people working on it right now. Um, I imagine we'll get some more runs on the board pretty soon. Uh, we are paying out for first, second, and third, so uh, don't be afraid to throw your hat into the ring. There hasn't been a lot of people who put up time, so really just putting a run on the board may be sufficient. So. 2657 is the time. Eric's 33 has it at the moment. So maybe get that note on screen. So I think of the 15 tracks we're going to see, uh, Eric said that nine of them he's doing with, uh, with Out of Bounds now. I think his previous PB only had maybe two Out of Bounds. This one, I think, has a lot more. So there's going to be a lot of Out of Bounds going on here. And when I say out of bounds, I don't mean like these little shortcuts you're seeing here and there, just, you know, cutting through the woods to go mm -hmm. somewhere. Um, Calimag has once again uh, murdered another game and built a complete viewer for all of the um, collision in this game, figuring out where the sides of the course are and discover that there's some open spots where you can get out of bounds. Uh, and then in a lot of cases, it's also just understanding the geometry well enough to figure out how to get between seams. So some of them it's really straightforward, some of it's not. In general, uh, this game has been just busted. Some stuff we covered while they were racing last week, I'll go over again. One of the things is damage to the car affects your speed and it doesn't get repaired at any point automatically. You have to spend some cash to fix your car up. So I don't want to avoid collisions that hurt the car. Apparently that didn't hurt the car. Uh, enemies can attack you in this game. It's, it's got some Mario Kart style stuff going on that micro machines uh, pro, pro am style weaponry where they have missiles and such and that will damage your car too, I think Yeah, there's a lot a lot going on in this game uh, Even if this weren't quite so glitched at this point um, breaking out of bounds uh, there's still a lot to know about it, figuring out how to minimize the amount of damage you take so you don't have to menu so much, figure out, you know, what tires to pick or engine upgrades to take. Um, if you wanted to get into this game and not do it glitched, um, there's still a lot on the table to figure out, so. Yeah, money is a commodity too. It's picked up on the track as well as for winning first, which is not necessary to win the speedrun, but it gives you more cash, I think, quite a bit more. Uh, the weather is somewhat random. I think it does affect things to some degree. It will affect your tire choice some, I think, sometimes. Ooh, what's that? Got spun out there. I think they were talking at one point about, um... Is he doing this out of bounds backwards? I think oh because they got spun out backwards, they just wanted to do it this way. I think that was just how they ended up, so they just put it in reverse. And <laughs> Amazing. So they're yeah, driving I, I through and... Has, I think every track has possible weather conditions and it just like rolls a die to what you get. Uh, for some it's rain, some it's snow. There's a lot. Well, that's a lap. You know how it is when you just do a lap real quick and uh, then we'll do another one. Five second lap. Oh uh, yeah, so here's an out of bounds glitch that's very strong. He accidentally slipped out of position, which means he has to go all the way back around in order to get that third lap, interestingly. It's a tough lap, that third one. It's <laughs> three times as bad as the second one. There's obviously no competing with that trick. 
Uh, that is very right. strong. So we got to repair damage. I see that. I I think someone mentioned, and I, I don't know for sure the numbers, but 20% is the most damage speed you can lose related to damage. Just 20% off your top, which is significant. Gotcha. About tires. Oh, he's got commentary on this. I can't hear it too well, but he was talking about wanting the tires there. There's a lot of really nice shortcuts in this, just in general. Yeah, built-in intentional shortcuts. Yeah, that was one of them there. I think it's pretty obvious when they're using an intentional shortcut. You do some sick jumps in this game, it's got some nice graphics. Good control, it's a pretty sweet little GBA game. No out-of-bounds on this map, yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think this one has one. It seems to mostly be um, places where there's really complicated tree lines sometimes seems to be the giveaway, or um, when there's a spot that you can either jump off of or drive off of in some way. Um, it seems like in some cases the trigger for when you fall off of a ledge or would jump off of a ledge is is in a different position than the actual boundary of the track, and so sometimes you can just sort of, sort of drive around that boundary. I love that while, the checkered flag is optional. <laughs> you can just shortcut past where it was and it counts. This is a very dangerous shortcut here. It's impressive how fast uh, Eric's did that, as well as, you know, other runners we've seen. These The built-in shortcuts seem to not pose a lot of challenge, and... Uh, it seems like it seems like they had to step their game up to find out of bounds to make it actually difficult. And the car disintegrated. They were like half a lap ahead of the other. I mean, they didn't use any out of bounds that time. They're just straight up 30 seconds ahead of the AI. The AI is not going to win these. Uh, so you do have to end in top position, as in you got you got the most points over all five of the races to get to the next course. Uh, so you will need to be first in terms of uh, Mario Kart style scoring where you get seven or eight points for getting first and less than that for second, but you still get some. It has to add up to put you in first or you won't get to qualify to the next set. So they do need to do that. That's obviously not a problem at the moment, though. I know for a fact from personal experience that tires make a huge difference on snow. And it seems like a big upgrade. I saw engines were upgraded twice already. Yep. That gives you a bonus to your both top speed and acceleration. It's a good stat. Yeah. I love acceleration in these games. Especially if you're going to be banging into a bunch of walls, acceleration makes all the difference. Yeah. Uh, do you play Mario Kart at all? I do. Mario Kart 8? I have. Well, yep. play some time. Uh, have you played it on 200cc? I have, but I'm not very good at 200cc. 150 oh. is about where I cap off at being good. My advice is definitely at that point, acceleration is the stat. Uh, handling right. acceleration. Top speed I'm kind breaking. of... Yeah. Top speed kind of bad. You don't really need it. Acceleration is going to make a huge difference, though. Yeah, 150 cc, you can legitimately not know what button is the brake button, but you need it at 200 cc. Yeah, it's actually really fun to play on once you get the hang of actually using the brakes and drifting with them, too. We took some damage there from that jump. There's a lot of big jumps in this. I don't know what happens if you hit the lava. I imagine you just get warped out and take some big damage. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, didn't hit the shortcut that time. That shortcut has been challenging to him, and I, I don't blame him. Um, the way that you slide around on this dirt makes it very difficult to slide in there. I'm interested in seeing how this game progresses as the last few weeks come up. Um, you know, we've got about two weeks before this game is complete. Yeah. And I think right now everyone's been really trying to figure out how the out of bounds works. But once that's been worked out, then it comes down to, okay, now can you figure out how to just drive the car? Um, which seems silly to do it in that order, but I think that it's going to be really interesting to see people kind of, all right, now I just have to become a better driver to get to that point. <laughs> I love this train jump. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, we have a race next week, and everyone's welcome to participate. Uh, I encourage y'all to jump in on that. It's going to be fun. And I think now's a good time as any to speak about possible format changes for the show, because I want to emphasize the race a lot. 
and I think it would be possibly more intense if we had the race as the goal and not necessarily the world record. The, the race being uh, the big one. We'd have a preliminary race still and we'd check out the world record and how strats are coming on week two. And then on week three we'd have our big race and I'd go by the top three on that. Uh, we're thinking about doing that and I'm gonna give it a try next month on the next game. Yeah, I think it'd be nice to kind of have some options on the table, you know, some games that may not lend themselves well to the race, we may keep it like this, but I, I'd, I'd like to see more people showing up for the race, and by making the race a bigger part of it, that might be a fun way to make that happen. Yeah, uh, there's a couple benefits and obvious drawbacks to that. Uh, some games aren't very good for racing, and really the world record really shines some cool stuff. This game surprisingly has a lot of <laughs> out-of-bound stuff that I think is really neat. But a, a race of something, like some of the games we've done in the past, would encourage people to compete, even though the world record holder has got some ridiculous run. If it's stuff that's hard to pull off, you might be able to beat them if they make a mistake uh, in a yeah. race setting, so you'd be encouraged to join in something like that. It's not hopeless for you, right? A little bit of practice. I think the other benefit to it is that um, it doesn't necessarily reward you for being the person who has the most free time that month. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that obviously being able to sink more time in it can help you develop consistency, but um, as is the case with actual normal speedrunning, um, everyday speedrunning is that very often the world record holder can just be the person who has the most free time on their hands. So um, prioritizing the race a little more might make that, um, might, might help to mitigate that a little bit. Now we are entering ice time. Uh, nitro is a usable thing, all four of those are, but the weapons don't have any use to... Uh, just don't have any use for the player themselves for beating the AI, and the AI is losing anyway. I'm surprised- I didn't see him buy tires for this one. Do they handle this without ice tires? Because I was having such a bad time. Uh, I didn't see him buy tires, but I'm not sure. I wonder if this is one of those ones where he gets out of bounds early <laughs> enough that it ends up not mattering. Uh, the racers are different too. Maybe one of them has better handling. I'm not sure about that. Are we consistent on who's being raced, or is there still variety on that? Because there was in the race uh, last week. I think you're. Um, I think the courses you're unlocking are uh, tied to the racers. So I don't think you can change. If I'm yeah, not I mean, mistaken. Um, from who you start with is what I mean. Like who they're picking to do the whole thing with. Have they picked a favorite? Uh, I'm not sure there is legitimately one right answer. Um, I know that I've seen different people use different vehicles, but uh, I could be mistaken about that, that now oil. that they know more. That oil spill is a weapon from the AI, and it's really gross where they put that one. I think this is just being handled with natural tires, and it's really, really impressive because I tried to do this, and I was definitely losing to everybody. It's really hard to control on this slippery stuff. Like, if I played this again for sure, I would be buying the ice tires for this. Give me those snow wheels. Well, if we do go to a race format, which I think we're, we're probably for sure going to try next month, um, it's going to be a week off after the big race. Like, it's going to be week one. We look at the game and announce it. Week two, we do a preliminary fun race. Week three, we look at the world record. And then week four, last week, we do the big race that we're looking at. And then there's six days of nothing while we prepare the next game. Just the time to relax. Right. That's what our schedule would be in that case. In that. But we'll certainly tell you which one's happening at the start. I got to pick next week. Uh, two weeks from now. They have one week and six days left in this game. That yeah, was really nice. It was really well done. We got a nice sunny day here in the woods. I love how they just jump to the front and that's it. The AI never catches up. Moonberry says that they think that the uh, snow tires only really impact you when the weather pattern is snow. Like snow oh. on the ground isn't enough maybe. That's interesting. Oh. oh, I've seen this one before. So you would go careening off this cliff. It's not like a jump, but it, you would just go careening off the cliff. But you can actually go around the boundary of the the course here. The key two looks different. The key two, you've you've upgraded.
This is a tough one to pull off, looks like. This car has an X hitbox. It's X-shaped. It's really weird. Nice. Well, we're here now. Are they lapping? They're lapping that guy. He's, he's not in second. He's... He's getting crushed. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not sure. Yeah, I think one of the nice things about um, the way uh, Calimag has been supporting Speed Bump is that Calimag has been producing not just not just doing um, glitch hunting on his own or on their own, but um, rather is building tools for other people to actually hunt glitches, which has been really nice. It seems like a lot of people are spending some of the early parts of the week, um, early parts of the 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 month, the four-week period, uh, actually hunting glitches using the tools that Calimag has been building. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That really drives things. It's really nice to have. I've left the Seven Godsense ones pinned, I think, for the moment, because it's just such a nice one. That was, that was nice, out-of-bounds stuff. That's, uh... I think there's been a lot more of that. I've seen a lot of that discussion. That's pretty much every time I look at this game in the Discord, the new out of bounds is being discussed and shown. Yeah, everyone's always posting either better, more consistent, or more optimized uh, out of bounds. Not a lot of people posting RTAs, but I think that we'll probably see more of that um, as we get closer to the end. Big jumps. I saw the AI knows how to use some of these shortcuts. Careful reverse. Gotta go through dimensions here. Mm, that one, that looks like a time-consuming mistake. Yep. Gotta use nitros to fix it too, it's expensive. Oh, it's stubborn. Once you're locked in there, though. Oh, that's three. Yeah, as long as you can stay out of bounds, then this can cost as much time as it wants to. It's still going to be faster in the long run. <laughs> Nothing wrong with getting lapped. You can teleport now. Now you're going yeah, to do the lap. Obviously, there's room to improve on this one still. I mean, the time is ridiculous. Somebody asked what the world record was when we started, and I don't think there even was one. We had a long play of reference, uh, which may have been cheating for all we know. Yeah. Long plays have no scruples with uh, using save states or rewinding to, to make something optimal or easier. And uh, it took over an hour. I think it took 70 or 80 minutes to go through five, uh, five circuits, so... And first. <laughs> made it first. I think that Easy. second place was right there, though. Uh, they barely made it in front of them. Yeah, it was But I mean, this is all good practice. This is all good practice, you know? When the next, uh, when the next PB comes up, uh, each of these out-of-bounds are probably going to be more and more optimized. Yeah, we're only doing the first three. I think the one play was an hour and a half or so, and it did all five. But we don't have a, we didn't have a time. Yeah, just to be clear, there's nothing wrong with a long play using save states. They're they're going for that. Jesus, that looked really easy. <laughs> yeah, long. They're going for a different service. goal. They just yeah. want to show the content. Is what they're really after. And they do it with no commentary. They just I I watch them all the time when I want to see a scene mm -hmm. from something. This level has a backwards wall. Who do you think the voice actor for Final Lap is? I don't know, I don't recognize it. <laughs> is it Steve Bloom?
This uh, starting grid thing, I haven't mentioned it at all, but there is some kind of little mini game where you use it, you, you time it to figure out who's in first on the start of this, I think. <laughs> that was really funny for some reason. Just the big splash, just the, the detail of that the effort that went into you dying there was really well done. And that's another stage, just doing a couple loops. Using that nitro to speed up the turns on the ending of each. Jack speed. Time for Delta. Yeah, this has come a long way since, uh, even the race last week, a few of these out-of-bounds had already been found, but I think only, like, two of them, um, people felt were consistent enough to do it in a race. Um, <laughs> and now, yeah, now Eryx is circuit. probably, probably doing this on more, more, uh, tracks than he's actually playing, racing, uh, normally. We have some big gold splits over there on the right, saving minutes and minutes of time. Uh, I don't think it was under 30 minutes until a couple days ago. Yeah, this was um, at least posted on speedrun.com two days ago, I think, Friday? Mm -hmm. Big time saves happening on this. This looks like a regular race. See, we both get the... Uh, we, we get some glitches and some regular racing in this one. They get everything. The gang's all here. boring, regular, extremely skilled racing, and then we get some glitches through the wall. <laughs> get them all. A lot, of, a lot of good drifting here. That oil is definitely the hard ship, I feel like. That's what the, the AI, it's a banana pill of this game. They just leave it in the absolute worst place, and it seems like the players just accept it. <laughs> Sometimes they just take it. It's like, I'm gonna hit this oil spill, and what am I gonna do about it? It doesn't seem like we lose too much time to spin out. I saw a mine on the field too, I'm not familiar with that weapon. Yeah, this is a really pretty pixel art game. I mean, this is on the Game Boy Advance, it's just some... Who drew this art? I mean, is this, is, did they really draw all of this or do they have assets of trees? Because they did a really good job with this pixel art. It's animated backgrounds too. Uh-huh. That's good stuff. Yeah, this game looks surprisingly good for a game I had never heard of until... What, three weeks ago? Cleared that one real clean. Big old time saves. Yeah, honestly, a lot of Game Boy Advance games look, look nice. <laughs> there's there's a lot of not great ones, but uh, they all look pretty good in my experience. There's a lot of good looking pixel art games on there. Okay, that just felt like there was a wall missing there again. Big circle here. Nice. And you do a race like that and you win a couple hundred dollars. It's just, does it even pay for the the trip out there? They're transporting a car it doesn't sound like six hundred dollars would cover it for the second place price. Do you know how expensive it is to be able to phase through solid objects? That's a very expensive ability for a car to have. I wonder must gas that That is the smoke screen. That's one of the worst effects for smoke I've ever seen. And it's just this disgusting white screen. I, it doesn't fit smoke at all. 
I really wonder why it is that um, <laughs> Eric does these in reverse. I don't actually know why that works that way. Why you'd want to do it in reverse. I know that there's a slight distinction between like the hitbox for the car and something else is sort of offset from it, but I don't think that has anything to do with it. Blue Jello says reverse has more control. Okay, that might explain it. I didn't even see the finish line that time. I, yeah, I was gonna... Eric's saying throttle is too fast. I figured reverse is probably just slower and that, that gives you more handling on it. Just an easy way to get it into low gear. Low speed. You're able to pick your song in this. Also, songs. You can also just turn the radio off with select, right? Yeah. One of those cars just went into that tiny little pool. And one of them's electrocuting the other cars. Yeah. These cars have some strange abilities. Have I wonder if any of the races have been ruined by the guy who mind controls. I don't know if the AI can do that. But I, I heard that was a power that is in this game. And I, this one I think that... like this one seems like one if you missed it probably cost a ton. Referee's on, just there, like, yep, yeah, mm -hmm, he's winning. I'm on my third lap. Third lap around what? Around this tree. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the rest of these guys are even doing. It's like they're not even playing. <laughs> it's being shoved. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> He wanted to reverse. I, he should have lost the the yeah. placement, right? That yeah. probably was the right play. Being in last place sounds like a strategy here, since the AI is being jerks about that. Oh my God. <laughs> this is such a weird game. Doesn't look like it's counted yet. I wonder how close you have to get. You have to reach out the window and touch the pole. <laughs> you don't need to worry about it. Last lap, you can just go forward. Good lord. Another win for throttle. Don't be sorry, Cali Mag. I love this. That's it. That's that's three circuits. Nice work. That's uh. Let me get that clock on screen here. There it is. If we really cared seven. about it, if we really cared about things like that, then we would set up the category at the beginning as being glitchless. Um, which I mean, you know, there may be a, a a month where we say, okay, this time no glitch is allowed. But I really don't see a reason for us to put too many restrictions on these things because it's really fun watching y'all work. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see me doing that. <laughs> that doesn't sound like something I would suggest. I like I like that category, but it just doesn't sound like a the best way to go. It's not. It's not common to do that, right? It's not a. It's usually just any percent is the main one, and then everything else is usually secondary. Typically, but I mean, some some games get broken so badly that the popular main categories are ones that do put some restrictions on it. Like, think A Link to the Past. That game can be beaten in under two minutes. Yeah. But nobody really runs that category because it's just not super interesting. I feel like that one is so bizarre that you have to label that one as something else. <laughs> like, it's the exception, not the any percent. Right. Any percent implies that is illegal. But I don't know anything about that. It would depend on the nature of the game, whether or not we ever did anything with, like, enforcing a glitchless category. But that's that's more difficult on its own, too, because then you have to actually define what a glitch is, which is remarkably difficult. Yeah. 
anyway, that's our current world record. I do not expect it to be the world record by the end of the month, but uh, Eric's has been, to my knowledge, the only one to put up a time, at least the only one I think I've seen post about it on Discord. Yeah. And um, more and more is being found. Um, the Discord channel is full of people posting new strats for getting out of bounds more consistently, more quickly, so. I mean, there's definitely room to save on that one. Uh, because that one la that one track just wouldn't cooperate, so I I think even Eric's is gonna improve on it probably. But we have a really good time now, uh, under 30 minutes. We weren't sure how long this one was gonna take. I remember having a discussion about that, and we were worried about doing all five because of how long it would take. I like the I 30 think minutes. If this kind of stuff was found for all five circuits. It would still probably be close to an hour, um, but. Maybe short enough that it would have been okay, but ultimately I just want people to feel like they can get involved with this, so I'm happy with the choice we made. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, next week we have a race, folks. I'd like to see you all there. I mean, you. <laughs> Whoever you are, if you want to race, uh, just sign up. All you got to do is broadcast to Twitch and tell me that you're playing. That's it. That's the, that's the whole process. I'll take care of the rest. You don't even need to have audio if you don't want to, but if you do... I'll take that too if you know that you won't be listening to our broadcast or you split the audio or whatever. Uh, and even more than that, if you want to participate in, the ra participate in the race and that even is too much for you, like you haven't figured out how to do all that, you can contact me or Smite and we will walk you through the steps of broadcasting mm -hmm. your game feed to Twitch. It's pretty easy to do, um, but someone will be happy to help you if you're interested. So don't let, uh, don't let not feeling confident in doing it uh, stop you. We want you to feel like you can get involved. Yeah, I actually have a tech support channel on my my Discord server, and, uh, and there's a lot of people in there who will help you out across the yep. board. That's what we got. Uh, thanks for joining me, Alpha Blues. For sure. Take care. We'll see you next week with the race, folks. And so, just get on Saturday or earlier and tell me in Discord you want to do it, and we'll be ready. Looking forward to it.